Hi, I'm Jimmy Navio. Having trouble with girls? Well, I can't help you there, unless girls are totally into Sigwin. Because that's what we're doing today. We're learning all about Sigwin, what it is, why you should use it, and how to install it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is open our web browser. We're going to come up here and go to sigwin.com. It's actually C Y G. Sigwin.com. There we go. So let's pull that up. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at what is Sigwin. So it says here, Sigwin is a collection of tools which provide a Linux look and feel environment for Windows. What isn't Sigwin? Well, it's not a way to run native Linux apps in Windows. You still have to compile anything that you want to run under Sigwin from source. So um, it has its pros and cons, but the good news is this is a great tool um, if you want to do some basic Linux uh, functions and, and development under Windows. So for you CSUB students out there who have your own uh, computers at home or a laptop and you want to do your assignments without having to log in to Sleipner, you can install Sigwin and do your development anywhere you want to at any time in Windows without having to worry about dual booting or you know virtual machines or anything like that. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and go through the installation process. So right over here, if you didn't see that, I clicked on Install Sigwin. And you have two options here. Uh, one option is for Sigwin for 32-bit Windows and Sigwin for 64-bit Windows. So if you're in a newer operating system like Windows 7 or Vista, Windows 8, uh, chances are you may have a 64-bit version of Windows so you can use this version um, however just be aware that not all of the Sigwin packages are available in the 64-bit version uh, it's pretty limited on some of the more advanced like development and math libraries so for example uh, Lisp or C Lisp is not available under the 64-bit version so for that reason I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the 32-bit version it'll still run fine under 64-bit uh, Windows um, and you'll have all of the libraries available to you. So let's go ahead and click on that and we will download this. Uh, I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. It looks like I already had a copy in there, but I'll go ahead and save it anyway. So let's navigate to our downloads folder. And there it is setup-x86.exe. And you want to remember where you saved it to because there's a good chance you will have to use this setup file more than once. And I'll explain that uh, a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and double click that. We'll run it. We'll hit next. Uh, you j usually want to choose install from the internet. Uh, that's going to give you the latest version of the libraries and it's going to download the libraries that you select. So we'll stick with that. The default location. Uh, for the installation is your main drive C for me uh, slash Sigwin so it's not going to go in program files or anything it's going to go directly on my C drive in a folder called Sigwin that's fine and it's just going to ask where you want the packages for the installation to go I'm going to leave that the way it is as well just go right into my downloads folder uh, direct connect that's fine and then right here this is basically a gigantic list of all of the sites that you can download Siglin, Sigwin packages from. So you can choose any of them. The one I tend to stick with is mirrors.kernel.org, the FTP. That one seems to be pretty reliable, so we'll go with that. Now, uh, a couple of people that I talked to, this screen right here was a little bit confusing to them. Basically, this is a list of all of the packages and libraries that are available for Sigwin. If you don't choose any of these, you will get a really basic core installation uh, of Sigwin. But chances are, if you're watching this video, there are some libraries you're going to want. So I'll kind of show you the process of installing some, some good libraries. So first of all, I know for a fact I'm going to be using the G++ compiler. So I'm going to come up here to the search. I'm just going to type G++. And then right here, it says that there are some packages 
with that name under the development category so we're just going to expand this and you can see there's a few different options for compilers I'm going to stick with this second one right here GCC G++ new compiler collection so I'm going to go ahead and click skip and it's going to change the word skip into the version number and basically all that means is it's going to install that version so don't let that confuse you uh, another package you're probably going to want to use so that you can connect to the school servers is SSH. Uh, so go ahead and type in SSH and we're going to expand the net category. And at the very bottom you're going to see open SSH. So we want, that's the one we want. Let's go ahead and do that one. You also uh, are at some point probably going to be using make files. So let's go ahead and look up make and I'm pretty sure it's under development there we go it's down towards the bottom here it says make the new version of the make utility we'll get that one um, you're also probably going to want n curses if you're not familiar with what n curses is basically that gives you some additional console color options it also is what allows you to use the clear command in the console so that's a pretty common one we want to have access to so I'm just going to install this one, the first one on the list right here, end curses. Um, you may also want to use Vim for any text editing you might want to do inside of your SigWin console. So I'm going to install that. And then also, if you are in 295, uh, CS 295, or any other class that might require logic, you may want to look at getting C Lisp, which is a really good logic. Um, implementation for doing some some logic calculations and that's pretty much it uh, if I forgot anything I can come back and run this installation again to install any additional packages so that's why it's good to hold on to that uh, setup file so once we've chosen all the libraries we are going to use for now we can hit next down here at the bottom and this screen right here is basically letting you know that all of the things that you selected to install, they actually require um, some other libraries to use, which is called dependencies. So this is letting you know, hey, these are all of the dependencies that have to be installed in order for your packages to work properly. So that's fine. You just uh, make sure that this is it's checked by default, but just double check that select required packages and hit next. So that's going to go ahead and set up all of our SIGWIN libraries and packages. In the meantime, we can go ahead and close out of here. And we'll wait for that to install. Uh, once everything is done, it'll give you an option here to save an icon to your desktop in the Start menu. Go ahead and do that um, so that we can easily find our SIGWIN terminal. So there we go. SIGWIN is installed and we have a nice SIGWIN terminal shortcut here. So let's go ahead and run it. The first time you run it, it's going to look for a home folder. If it doesn't find one, it's going to set one up in a default location. But this may look familiar. This is your basically your Linux command prompt. It's your, your SIGWIN console. The first thing I like to do, just because the window is so small and the text is hard to read, you can right click right on this window, go down to options, click on text and we can change our text I'm gonna use a font that I like called Inconsolata change the size to 15 and you can also go to this looks field and let's make it slightly transparent we'll hit apply we'll hit OK and now let's just go ahead and expand this window and there you have it so all your basic Linux functionality ls of course there's nothing in the folder right now let's make a directory real fast and there you have it um, some things you may want to consider this is the like I said the default location uh, it's not ideal so let's come in here and take a look in our C SIGWIN folder it created a folder called home and then generally it'll be your username. That's the default location where it's going to work out of if you don't have an environment variable set. So let's go ahead, um, if you want to set up a different location for your 
your main working directory, let's go ahead and see how that would be done. So for me, what I like to do is set up a folder inside of my uh, users folder. So I'm going to go here to, you know, in Windows, your, your default user folder. I'm going to go to Paul, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it Home. So that's where I want to work out of. And I'm going to go into that folder. I'm going to copy the location up here at the top in the address bar. And if you didn't know this about Windows, when you go to a folder, it has these little funny arrows. Just click on the white space somewhere, and it'll actually expand out the address for you so you can copy it. And then we're going to come down to Windows, and we're just going to type the word variables. And it's going to bring up a couple options here. So we want to go to Edit Environment Variables for Your Account. Go ahead and click on that. Now we see some interesting entries here. And what we want to do is add an entry called home up here at the top to the, your user variable. So we're going to go to new and we're going to write, write home in all caps. And then the value, we're going to paste that address. So our new home location is going to be eusers Paul home. You can make it any folder you want to work out of. Um, this is just going to be your default working directory for your SIGWIN terminal. Basically, when you open your terminal, it's where it's going to default to, uh, and all your settings and files and everything will be saved in that location. So I go ahead and hit OK, and now you see home right there. So I'm going to hit OK now. And the next time I run my SIGWIN terminal, it should actually default to that location. So as you can see, there's nothing in it now uh, because we moved to a new folder that we just made. So let's do a make directory test. And you see here over in our home folder, test was made. So we successfully changed our default home location. Uh, one last thing you might want to do, go ahead and close your console. Go back to the old home location on SIGWIN home Paul, and then uh, all the settings that it, it set up for you the first time around by default, you may want to copy those over to your new home folder. So we're going to select all anything with a period in front of it is a hidden file, and it's usually um, different settings uh, files. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these over to my new home location. So let's go back to Paul, and where did it go? There it is, home. So let's go ahead and paste all of those files. And there you have it. So when we open SIGWIN now, our settings with our font size and all of that are saved. And we're good to go. I'll probably have another uh, video or two explaining some more advanced uh, configuration of settings. But that should be enough to get you going. Now, if you are a CSUB student, you'll notice uh, we did install SSH. So you can go ahead right from your SIGWIN window. No need for PuTTY anymore. Just type SSH and your login. So SSH, my username, at sleipner.cs.csubak.edu. And of course, the first time it's going to ask you if you want to add it to your list of hosts. Just type yes. Type in your password. And I'm officially connected to Sleipner. So as you can see now, I'm on the server. All my files are there. And when I'm done, log out. When I'm done with Sigwin, close out. And that's it. You're all set up with Sigwin. Oh, and one thing, just in case you're curious, we do also have Vim, because we installed it during uh, the package installation. It was one of the packages we selected. Uh, again, if there's any packages that you end up needing in the future, you can just go through and run your setup again and uh, include any additional packages you'd like to install. For example, if you're taking Gordon's graphics class, you'll probably want to install X11 and the X Windows server. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you.